You are in time for NTV Weekend Edition. On a day, President Uhuru Kenyatta announced further restrictions and extended existing ones, all in a desperate attempt to fight the aggressive coronavirus. This is the number of those infected rises by 49 in the last 24 hours, bringing the total number of cases to 830. The death toll has risen by five, bringing the total number of those who have succumbed to the virus to 50. Globally, there are over 4.6 million coronavirus infections and 310,614 people have died. In Africa, the infections are over 81,000 and 2,688 people have died. And in the US, the infections stand at over 1.4 million, with the death toll climbing to over 88,000. A check now of the day's headlines. Tonight. We have unfortunately witnessed an increased number of imported cases among individuals crossing into the country through our borders. Kenya now shuts her borders with Tanzania and Somalia and further extends movement restrictions amid mounting frustration. Also tonight... And I'll go for you. <laughs> Stories of survival and hope. NTV's Kevin Mutai gives you a front row view of this epic battle against COVID-19. Plus, floods, rain, hell and destruction across the country. We take a closer look at the cascade of ruin downstream the Tana River. And also tonight, ways with Martin Schmidt. the first steps back to normalcy for the soccer-starved. But normal life is still a far-off dream. This is Weekend Edition with Smriti Vidyarthi. Thanks for joining us. David Agondoa is our sign language interpreter tonight. Kenya has officially closed down its border with Tanzania and Somalia as the country strives to reduce the number of infections of the COVID-19 disease. President Uhuru Kenyatta says the move was necessitated by the sharp increase in infections imported into the country from the two nations. The closures take effect from midnight tonight. NTV's Brenda Wanga reports. We have unfortunately witnessed an increased number of imported cases among individuals crossing into the country through our borders. And these new areas have become a matter of grave concern to us. While efforts to flatten the curve of the COVID-19 infections in the country are still being implemented, the country is now moving to stem the bleeding from cases that are not homegrown. In the last one week alone, a quarter of the new cases reported in Kenya have come from outside the country. This last week, a total of 43 cases have recently crossed the border from neighboring Somalia and Tanzania. The bulk of these cross-border cases originating from Tanzania, with the border points of Namanga, Esebania posting 16 and 10 cases respectively, Lungalunga and Loitoktok registering two and one positive cases each, Wajir on the Kenya-Somali border had 14 of the 43 positive cases, and that number could have been higher. 78 truck drivers who are foreign nationals tested positive for COVID-19. They were denied entry into our territory at different border crossings. Now Kenya is moving to stop this. There will be a cessation of movement of persons and any passenger, passenger ferrying automobiles and vehicles into and out of the territory of the Republic of Kenya through the Kenya-Tanzania international border except for cargo vehicles with effect from midnight tonight, Saturday the 16th, May 2020. 
the same measures will apply to the Kenya-Somalia border. Cargo vehicles will only be allowed entry into the country if the drivers have undergone mandatory testing at the affected border points and given a clean bill of health. The government is hopeful that these additional measures will have a big impact on slowing down the march of the virus. Brenda Wanga, NTV. It is still illegal to be moving around between 7 p.m. and 5 a.m., at least until the 6th of June. The president extended the nationwide curfew by another 21 days as the country recorded 40 new, 49 I beg your pardon, new cases of COVID-19. The president also extended the restriction of movement in and out of the counties of Nairobi, Mombasa, Kilifi, Kwale and Mandera. NTV's Silas Apollo has the details. Kenyans will for another 21 days be forced to be home before 7 p.m. after the government extended the dusk to dawn curfew to June the 6th. President Uhuru Kenyatta says the extension was aimed at minimizing the spread of the coronavirus after the country recorded an additional 49 cases to bring the total number of cases to 830. We have a brutal and unforgiving enemy in our midst. This enemy is trying to gain entry using every door, every window, every crack. He's asking every single Kenyan to sneak him in so that he can attack all of us. President Kenyatta also extended the restriction of movement in and out of Mombasa. Kwale, Kilifi, Bandera, and the Nairobi metropolitan areas by another 21 days. Who gonjwa ni hatari. Na yale masharti ambaye tumetoa lazima tuyatimize kama wa Kenya. Na sio tu kwa sababu tuataka kuumiza mtu yeyote. La. But many have expressed frustration with these restrictive directives from the government. In areas like Isili, which has been under containment, a sense of desperation is slowly creeping in. Many businesses are opening their doors as the area crawls back to normalcy. But President Kenyatta says the restrictions are necessary to protect lives. Afanye jukumu laki. Atende jukumu laki. Apende mwenzaki. The dust to dawn curfew was expected to end tomorrow. President Kenyatta now says that while the impacts of the extension will be painful, no effort will be spared in the fight against the virus. Silas Apollo, NTV. While well, the COVID-19 pandemic is disrupting every aspect of human life and at the center of the battle to kick out the disease is efficient and timely sharing of information. But how do you do that with children and their young inquisitive minds? Well, this Sunday, NTV Weekend Edition will host a virtual town hall on minding your child in these times of a global pandemic. Here's all you need to do. Capture a short video clip of yourself Tell us who you are and where you're from, if you wish, and where you can with your child, asking a question or sharing how you're managing anxiety among your young ones as relates to mental health, communicating the guidelines and general child health and welfare. Then send the video via WhatsApp to the number 0745925002. We'll have a child psychologist and other experts to dissect through the concerns live at 9 p.m. tomorrow. And once again, that number is 0745925002. Now, in the COVID-19 isolation and treatment units across the country, every new dawn without the unfortunate news of loss of life is celebrated. 
at the center of the war against an enemy that respects no law of war are patients worn down by the virus but breathing health into their lungs one day after another in the hope of full recovery. While walking the journey with them are medical personnel, the stubborn angels holding the pulse of a nation and refusing to yield to a stealthy killer. Our coast reporter Kevin Mutai gained exclusive access into a treatment unit and has the details of what exactly goes on inside the virus war room. Kevin will bring us that story shortly in this broadcast. Do stay tuned to get the insight. All right, away from COVID-19 for a moment and Rwandan genocide suspect Felicien Kabuga, who has been on the run for nearly three decades, has finally been arrested by French police near Paris. The 84-year-old, who had a 500 million shilling bounty on his head, was living under a false identity in a French capital suburb, according to the French Justice Ministry. Zainab Ismail retraces the search for one of the world's most wanted fugitives, said to be one of those behind the genocide in Rwanda, where one million people, mainly Tutsis, were slaughtered. After 25 years on the run, French police finally apprehended one of the last key suspects in the 1994 Rwandan genocide. Felicien Kabuga, once one of Rwanda's richest men, is accused of financing the genocide. According to a joint statement from the French Justice Ministry, the operation was carried out at dawn, where Kabuga was living under a false identity in Agnès sur Seine. Kabuga, a Hutu businessman, is accused of funding the notorious Interahamwe militia that massacred some 800,000 Tutsis and moderate Hutus over a span of 100 days in 1994. He was indicted by the United Nations International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda in 1997 on seven counts of genocide, complicity, direct and public incitement, attempt and conspiracy to commit genocide, persecution and extermination. During his 25 years in hiding, there were claims that he was hiding in Kenya and was being protected by the powers that be at that time claims that the governments of the late President Daniel Arap Moi and former President Mwai Kibaki refuted. In fact, in 2003, U.S. investigators camped in Kenya to follow up on these reports, but they could not find him. He will now be arraigned before the Paris Appeal Court and later the International Court in The Hague, where he is expected to stand at trial in the coming days. His arrest has been welcomed by Rwanda's National Public Prosecution Authority, which says it is ready to cooperate with the relevant authorities to ensure justice is served. But even though Rwanda has worked hard to rebuild itself, the wounds of the tragedy have not healed. For families of victims, forgiveness remains difficult, where the bodies of their loved ones have still not been found, and when many other killers still evade justice. Zainab Ismail, NTV. Back home and many families in the capital will tonight be braving another night in the cold after the government brought down their homes last night in Ruai. The residents accuse the government of defying court orders temporarily stopping the demolitions to pave way for the expansion of the Ruai sewage plant. Yunus Omolo reports. Tired and cold, this expectant woman's expectations to have a home for her and her unborn child were shattered when bulldozers pulled her house apart in the dead of the night. She is a man dozens of families kicked out of a place they called home in Rwai as government embarked on another round of night demolitions to reclaim public land. They now have to brave another cold and rainy night. Earlier this month, the government started evicting hundreds of people who had bought property next to a disputed 3,000 acre piece of land to pave way for the expansion of the Dandora sewage treatment plant in Rai, Nairobi. Atukatai, lakini tulisikiza na PS, walans, wanapeta muraguri ya kwamba, 
hakuna mtu yeyote atakuja kubomolewa manyumba kwa sababu walikubali kututoa hapa kutupeleka kwingine so tulikuwa tunangoja tutorelewe tupeleke kwingine tutoe vitu zetu pole pole tukuenda mahali hapo about 5000 families were left homeless on the 4th of may when the Nairobi City Water and Sewerage Company demolished their houses to reclaim allegedly grabbed land. The company went on to bring down the houses despite a court order issued by Justice Okongo a day earlier stopping the demolitions. Na wasirekari ifuatage orders. Kamu wamesaviwa, warudise orders na wabeyo. Kwa sababu wasipo fuata order, mii sifikiri atakunaja kushika vijana wanaiba iba masimu kutaun. Doing it at night, without even prior notice that shows malice in this government and, and and that is our main concern it's our main concern the night demolitions have drawn public condemnation as the country battles the coronavirus pandemic but these destitute families only want a roof over their heads during this particularly difficult season Eunice omolo and tv well, just where are these families meant to go? All right, let's shift focus back to uh, the coronavirus. And almost a quarter of a billion Africans could become infected with COVID-19. This is according to a new modeling study by the World Health Organization. There are concerns over the readiness of healthcare systems on the continent to handle mass infections. In the midst of the pandemic, Burundi has expelled the top WHO officials in the country days ahead of key elections. A new study by the World Health Organization has found that up to 200 million Africans could be infected by the coronavirus. The study further says that unless action is taken, as many as 150,000 people in the continent could die. There is also a concern that countries' health systems won't be able to handle mass infections. Even with the 27 recorded infections and one death, Burundi expelled a World Health Organization team in the middle of the pandemic, just days before the presidential elections. The government gave the four officials a few days to leave the country over what they termed as unacceptable interference. The announcement came amid low testing for COVID-19 and few precautions against the disease. Authorities have downplayed the seriousness of the virus and allowed public gatherings like mass election rallies in contradiction with World Health Organization recommendations. Burundians will choose a new president, parliament, and local officials on May 20th. A Ugandan wildlife sanctuary is appealing for funds as it only has enough money to feed its animals until June. Uh, we have had a shortfall of 400,000 US dollars as a result of the lockdown which was basically supposed to come from the visitors. And since we closed down, that implied that that income is not coming in. No visitors have been to the Ugandan Wildlife Conservation Education Center since it closed in March. But the animals themselves are thriving in the quiet, finding it much easier to breed. And as Angola reopens its operations, one neighborhood in Luanda remains isolated after several residents were diagnosed with COVID-19. Angola has so far recorded just 43 cases, including two deaths. In Senegal, engineering students have invented automatic hand sanitizer dispensers and medical robots. We realize that in Senegal, at least in developing countries, medical equipment to protect health workers was limited. Since the workers are on the front line of the fight, the idea is to protect them so that they can protect and lead the fight against the pandemic. From the engineering school in Dakar, they have turned their technical skills towards easing pressure on words, and they are already in talks with hospitals. As the skies clear daily from the unrelenting, saturating rains that have washed off of people's livelihoods and hope, the aftermath is now even more real. And for many more people, a dark and heavy cloud of unimaginable loss still hangs over much of the country. Families waiting out the storm in temporary shelters are in desperate need of food, water and just basic supplies. Now, NTV's Leila Mohammed paints us a picture of the devastation caused by the flooding along the Tana River's course and the humanitarian crisis unfolding there. 
and that story coming to us in just a moment. Remember, you saw the devastation caused here in the capital, but now let's take you to the situation around the Tana River. Here is Leila Mohammed's report. Tana River from the skies. The view from up here is breathtaking. The country's longest river snakes gently along its course as it carves its way to the Indian Ocean. This is a source of life and sustenance for hundreds. But suddenly, this source of life turned deadly, posing its most dire threat after the river surged beyond its banks, choking farmlands and homes and threatening to wipe them off the map. The forecast is still a dark, gloomy cloud that could bring parts of the country more than just moisture in the next few weeks. The river level is still high, of a point of around 6.0 uh, 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 meters now as per today. Kilometers away, a full Masinga dam releases its excess water in a gush into a tributary that flows into the Tana River, sending a cascade of devastation downstream. It's just one of the five dams that have filled up since the rain started pelting the country. In Garsen, Tana River County, the river carves out new paths, bringing pain to communities in its path. It's hard to tell the river's original cause. The Hola Bridge is now almost enveloped by flood waters, threatening to cut off the residents there and to destroy expensive infrastructure. It takes planning on water infrastructure. It takes time planning on medical, on education, on the rest of the services which are mandated by law as rights to the people. So just by telling the people to move does not offer a solution. Camps filled with the displaced now line the river's route. Here families wait out the storm with just enough to get them through the rainy season. Upstream in Garissa, Nuru Malika Ripai is desperately trying to calm her niece down when we meet her. The baby's mother stands helpless, numbed by nature's blow. The baby has been coughing as she endures endless nights in the cold. The daytime heat is unbearable. They have nowhere to go as the floods destroyed all they had. Her husband and brother work odd jobs to at least put food on the table every evening. In yet another part of this camp in Garissa, Mze Abdin Nasir Adin Ali and his wife found a temporary home here from the floods. His five children are scattered in different homes back home, safe for now. Shamba sikuwa nae lakini nilikuwa na kabeshara kidogo ya kiosk na uza uza mboga na uza uza sukari. Hapa tu kwa nyumba wika wana kama kibanda. Na wika kitanda alafu nafanya hiyo biashara hiyo. Hiyo ndo nilikuwa na ji na tagemea. Na sangini na chukua makana nunua kutoka watu. Na nausa nunua bei raisi alafu mi na leto huko kwa soko. The Kenya Red Cross says that there are currently 26 camps in Tana North, hosting 21,088 families, eight camps in Galole hosting 260 families, and 17 camps in Tana Delta hosting 962 families. About 3,410 families are homeless. Others have been marooned and need to be evacuated. At times, Red Cross officials have to paddle across swollen waters to get to those in need.
but many of them are reluctant to leave the only homes they've known to march safer ground. The rains have appended lives in Garissa. Sections of farmlands along the river's course have been flooded. Residents fear they will have nothing to harvest if the saturating rains continue. These people were uprooted from where they were originally. These were farmers along the river and uh, now they are in these camps. Uh, they are not working. They are basically here as IDPs and uh, they, they need an urgent intervention in terms of food relief and especially to the a special case to be given to children under five and the special cases like the disabled, the elderly, the mothers. Lactate, both lactating and nursing mothers also need a special uh, type of food. These young ones are fishing in what was once a trading center. Their patience is rewarding as they return with a basin full of fish. <laughs> Kenya Red Cross says they have been trying to get to the desperate. In Kajado, a helicopter will help transport food and supplies to affected families in Pakase village. The devastation there is evident from the skies. We are here uh, uh, from uh, Kenya Red Cross headquarters supporting the Kajado branch team uh, to respond to the needs of at least 200 households of uh, Pakase villagers of uh, still Kajiado County who have been cut off from uh, the outside world by the rains. Apparently, uh, there is a river which passes near the village. Uh, it it it's caused some times back and cut off uh, the village. To get to those far removed areas, the Kenya Red Cross banks on support from the Airbus Foundation. So the, I mean, uh, humanitarian uh, help or aid to the humanitarian sector is just one of the, the things that Tropic does. And certainly at the moment with the, the downturn in tourism that's affecting everyone, um, I think it's, uh, you know, the best use of time and resources that we do something to, to help. So much in the last few months. So, I mean, obviously there's been lots of rain since uh, October time last year. So, I mean, even up north in uh, kind of all the Samburu area, it's a lot greener and a lot wetter than it, it normally is. So that's probably the biggest difference. It's been a long day. It's been a roller coaster ride, at least for me, but one that opened my eyes to nature's ruthlessness. These communities had very little before, but now they have far much less. Leila Mohammed NTV in the town of Delta. Hell and high water. And as it says down there on the tag, the rains are set to continue. All right, let's shift focus and take a breather now on NTV tonight. But first, have a quick look at this. And sitting at home and wondering perhaps what to do with all that time in your hands? Well, this man was making use of the extra free time owing to the lockdown in the UK, carving out versions of the COVID-19 each day from fruits, vegetables and household items. Well, he's kept up the challenge on Instagram for nearly 60 days straight and says that it's a comment on sustainability as well as enjoy an enjoyable creative outlook. Do stay with us. We'll be right back after this break. The risk of illness causing jumps is increasing. It is believed that the coronavirus can remain on surfaces in your home for up to nine days. Touching infected surfaces is one of the ways in which jumps spread. Regularly disinfect your floors, countertops, and kitchen surfaces with bleach. And use an effective toilet cleaner inside and outside your toilet bowl. This message is brought to you by Medifacts, Jig, and Hapik. Who wants to answer? Mary? Mary has a toothache. Oh, I see. And who knows why? Because the tooth is too big. 
No. It might be a hole in her tooth called a cavity. That's why I brush twice a day using Colgate. Imagine this is your tooth and these are food acids that cause cavities. Colgate with calcium and fluoride helps prevent cavities for maximum cavity protection. And now available in a 12 gram sachet for fresh breath. Only 15 shillings. Disinfect and protect your home with JIC. JIC kills 99.9% .9 of illness-causing germs. Disinfect floors, kitchen and bathroom surfaces and wash white clothes, towels and dishcloths with JIC bleach. Just JIC it. I'm Ryan Mirule and I was brought up as Rudu Angoy and everyone waited for me to be a girl. I was happy expecting a boy. Now the 2019 population census revealed that there are all over 1,500 intersex persons in the country. When you go to the toilet, they all want to see if you squat or stand. The stigma is real, mm -hmm. so that's why if you survive not to be killed, you kill yourself. Find out what exactly is uh, intersex persons and especially the medical bit of it. A secure place for your family. You can get all this and more at Amani Ridge, the place of peace. Call us today on 0790-300-300 or visit www.optivan.co.ke. Selena! Tata, where is mommy? Today is a toilet day. What? Oh, oh. <gasps> Selena! Toilet day? Tomorrow we're hosting a party and it's a matter of my reputation. It's a toilet. Not a white shirt. Even if you spend your entire day cleaning with bleach and detergent, you won't be party ready. Impossible. Challenge. Happy 10X. Even if you use bleach and detergent 10 times, they won't give you the same sparkling clean toilet that Happy 10X will give you. Wow! wow. Happy 10X. Happy, Kenya's number one toilet cleaner. Nyajo wa Kenya. Hii ni public service announcement kuhusu coronavirus. The Ministry of Health advises all returnees from abroad to self-quarantine for at least 14 days, whether they feel well or unwell. Wash your hands regularly following the eight steps of hand washing. Wet hands with warm water, apply a small amount of soap, rub palms together, rub fingers and thumbs and the beads in between, rub nails on palms, rub the back of each hand, rinse with clean running water, and a dry thoroughly with a clean dry towel. Furthermore, it is advisable to cover your mouth and nose adequately when sneezing or coughing and immediately dispose of the tissue in a dustbin. Please do not use handkerchiefs if you can avoid it. If disposable tissue is unavailable, cough into your elbow. Try and avoid close contact with anyone showing signs of respiratory illness such as coughing or sneezing. Before you share any coronavirus information on social media, please verify it with Ministry of Health to avoid panic and alarm among your fellow Kenyans. Shop online and pay with your Visa card securely for groceries and other essentials, e-learning subscriptions, online entertainment subscriptions, as well as all other bills online. With Visa, you can make payments online using your Visa card in three easy steps. Simply go to the checkout page, select Visa card, enter your card information, and your purchase is securely completed. Safe is smart. Visa, everywhere you want to be. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back. Let's take you to Kevin Mutai's story now. And in the COVID-19 isolation and treatment to units across the country, every new dawn without the unfortunate news of loss of life is, of course, celebrated. Well, at the center of the war against an enemy that respects no law for war are patients worn down by the virus but breathing health into their lungs one day after another in the hope of full recovery. Walking the journey with them are medical personnel, the stubborn angels holding the pulse of a nation and refusing to yield to a stealthy killer. Our coast reporter Kevin Mutai gained exclusive access into a treatment unit and has the details of what exactly goes on inside the virus war room. At the Jocham Hospital, we are first guided into the dawning room. Here, we are suited up in proper preventive gear before proceeding to the isolation and treatment centers. The world is battling an enemy equipped with a deadly, sneaky arsenal and has perfected the art of stealth. 
and so we are closely monitored by medical professionals. Every piece has to fit perfectly. We first head to the hospital's isolation unit. Here we meet a patient anxiously waiting test results. She was brought here after exhibiting symptoms of the disease. <laughs> We then head to the red zone, the actual war room, where patients and doctors have drawn their daggers and jumped headfirst onto the battlefield. And I'll go for you. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Then after two days, I can say my dog and ask you, "Who knows my mama?" So if you want to keep your cow in there, can be a mess of pain killer. Can be a after almost one week, you can just go and ask your baridi. So I can be doing book appointment in a doctor. Then the two one is that I say book. So to live for you can temperature in the panda kidogo. The temperature is on the borderline. So the temperature is on the fever. So I can see Madam, I can fever. Lakini kwa sababu ilikuwa hiyo temperature yuko borderline ukaamua tu mpime pia covid so that was on monday karibu nyumbani na kumesa zile dawa nipewa kupanda kuona fever ni kama imepungua kufika wednesday akapata simu kumwambia kulingana na ile fever vile ilienda Ina unukana there is a positive, you are a positive case. So, unukafanya arrangement, akaletu wa hapa. Sasa nilipo ona meletu wa hapa, mimi siku ngoja, sababu niliambiwa inashika haraka na hasa bide nimekua na ee. So, mimi pia nikajipeleka sultani. So when you figure from Lango, who are Kuna, Kuna Malo, and Pima, Panda temperature, you are where to go. So I look at my temperature, Kona, it's normal. Kona, I'm the home Zenenda. Kona, I'm the sister Pana. I'm not your temperature, Kona, normal. But in the corp of Sabab Mwenzang, while you are Hapa, and as I'm talking to you, she's admitted. So Lazima ni Pima. So I can arrange Kapima, that was on a Friday. Or you can pick a Monday morning. You can be a father, mama, penny mama, Lienda. So to can find arrangement. You can let her happen. And thus began the difficult journey of isolation and treatment. Kama kila mutu wa pata environment, kama yetu me pata hapa. That could be the best thing that can happen. Kwa sababu ni lipo leto hapa, ni kwa na jua na leto kama, kama mtu munaenda kutafuta matibabu. So, nitaweko wa wherever will be. Lakini lipo sa wangibuwa, hey, ingia hapa. Nikapata ata mwenzangu yuko hapa. You know, I felt very good. Kwanza nikaona, hii, nionijua, we are in our last year, Iyo miyake yetu imesonga kidogo 
Nikaona eh huyu madaktari amenileta kwa honeymoon. But now <laughs> na honeymoon minus other things eh. <laughs> Because we're not at a spacing eh. <laughs> so nikaona nimeletwa kwa kwa honeymoon. So in fact eh, alipo ni hata nyumbani ningempigia simu angenijibu but kama binadamu there are things i could feel maybe sijua nasikiaje but now right now we are together okay in fact hata yeye sasa amekuwa more encouraging tunasumuza mambo yetu ya kawaida na ikifikia hapo this is more encouraging you know naona sisi bado tuna nguvu and we have our bible here ukifika usiku hapa na kiri we are the prayer warriors in this house <laughs> Yeah. In another word, we find a younger patient, the burst of good cheer in her eyes, masking the pain she has been battling. I'm positive. Na niko na hizo signs zote, si hata kwa lazima nianguke ama nikose pumzi ndio kwa. For me, I mean, yani inataka mtu ukue strong, kwanza ukue strong na ukubali, ukue na imani. Na wale wenye wako huko nje wanadhania kama mimi nitakufa ama nita turn back bora tu ufuate magizo, ukunywe dawa ukule unakuwa tu utakuwa sawa so hakuna mtu anaweza maybe siku yako ikifika ndio utakufa na hii kitu okay kuna vile utakuwa weak lakini you have to fight you have to put on faith like utasema inshallah mimi nitatoka dr menga chiringa is in charge of treatment of covid-19 patients at the jocham hospital his daily routine involves monitoring how each patient is responding to treatment they are stable just covering them from irritation of the throat and uh, protect them from chest infection what type of medication do you administer to covid-19 patients you see most patients present with different complaints so we manage each complaint according to, i mean we manage the complaint with the medication some just come with cough most of them are symptomatic and for those who come with coughs we pre- protect them from chest infection we give them antihistamine to sedate the irritation and the coughing we even boost their immunity and uh, yeah any specific types of drugs it also depends because some don't have even symptoms but mostly we cover them with like azithromycin and uh, antihistamine that is either cetrizine paracetamol and also vitamin uh, C those are the main which we normally use. They are stable, not even a single patient on uh, oxygen. Uh, we haven't experienced any patient uh, transiting to complicating to warrant HDU or more intensive care. Some of the patients here are referrals from the Kenya Ports Authority, Bamburi and Mvita, which hosts Old Town, the geographical zone with the most number of cases in Mombasa County. Confirmed patients are like eight and uh, We've discharged six patients who are now stable with a negative result. And uh, currently we have uh, two awaiting results and two are confirmed cases. Uh, the ones we are, which are awaiting the results are in the isolation and the other ones also are in the other red zone isolation. Life in the red zone is an everyday hope for the best possible outcome amid the anxiety and stigma that come with the virus. But there are watu wanasema wananiongelea yani wanaongelea vibaya oh this huko ana ugonjwa ni tu hospitali umeka tu hospitali hivyo. Majirani wanakuona ukikohoa wanakutenga wanakaa kando na wewe wanasema sema kando huyu huyu huonekana huyu huonekana. Na unajua ugonjwa uzidi usiku. Na kila mtu amelala kila mtu anakusikia unakohoa. And like any battle there will be casualties. The Ministry of Health says up to 34 health workers have tested positive and Jocham Hospital has not been spared. A nurse caught the virus after coming into contact with a patient. To date we've tested about 40 staff. The first test of uh, 19 staff, we got one staff who turned positive. But now that staff was working in our patient department. That was a nurse on tracking the patient that she may have come into contact with there was one patient who was positive eventu- uh, eventually but who was later on transferred to cost general perhaps maybe when you get uh, out of this place today when you get home how do they receive you uh, for the children yes they 
take me as their father but for my wife I know she's very careful uh, before I get inside I have to remove everything at the doorstep <laughs> But outside the confines of this facility and into the heart of Mombasa Old Town are the deniers and naysayers who rather wish away the existence of the virus. A week ago, the Ministry of Health sounded a stern warning to residents there who flouted the measures with a reckless abandon. <laughs> So, iki tu iko. Is COVID-19 real? <laughs> it is real. And this disease, it is going to affect most of us if we are not watchful. Uh, the government is sending messages all over, everywhere. Stay at home, stay at home. This disease is being spread by the droplets. When you get in touch with the droplets and maybe you touch your face, any opening, the disease might infect you. So the worst thing you can do in life, in the general life, is to cut out your head. It cannot be doing that if that's a joke. Mombasa County is the second most affected in the country after Nairobi. Also alarming is the number of deaths in the county, at least 15. More than five deaths here have occurred at home. And the question of how to handle the bodies has been on the lips of many. The body is temporarily stored, but it is wrapped in a waterproof, first in a waterproof polythene, then uh, put into a sealed body bag, and these bodies have to be disposed within 24 hours. The World Health Organization says there is no evidence of persons having become infected from exposure to bodies of those who died from COVID-19. But with the fluid novel of this disease, the boundaries remain an ever-shifting bloodline. Back at Jocham Hospital, our watch has ended, and it's time to give way for the doctors to pick up from where they left. But not before we free ourselves of the protective gear. Kevin Mutai, NTV, Mombasa. That report by Kevin Mutai, he gained exclusive access into that room. The hashtag, the virus war room, bring us, uh, give us your feedback rather uh, on Twitter. We'll go through some of your comments. And of course, we wish all those affected a speedy recovery. Remember, stay home if you can. Otherwise, stay safe. Wash your hands and wear a mask and keep your distance from others. At this point, time for another quick break. And while the coronavirus cancelled virtually everything, including learning, it didn't cancel Varsha Tebo's graduation ceremony at Georgetown University in the USA. So the 27-year-old Pakistani student is instead celebrating her school achievement from her bedroom, donning her cap for a virtual ceremony organized for her and other graduates by the International House where she lives in Washington. Well, good for you all. At this point, we take a break. Stay with us. Bye. Selector, the difference is in the taste. Leo, 
umeka mkukuke mbesha riang venye utastay safe mtani venye kame nuka na rada ni chafu riang ya kwanza mtu wangu kunawa mikono hiyo ni sekunde palu after umewada hapo unatumia hiyo waba inadiririka namba mbekse ni social distancing ha lazima upigia gedhugu lazima mwuri wako wakue 1.5 meters kutoka kwako ama kita mbekse rule number 3 kwa uwezi kutulia kejani dunga mask jeshi Pamoja tukomeshe korona. Who wants to answer? Mary? Mary has a toothache. Oh, I see. And who knows why? Because her tooth is too big. No. It might be a hole in her tooth called a cavity. That's why I brush twice a day using Colgate. Imagine this is your tooth and these are food acids that cause cavities. Colgate with calcium and fluoride helps prevent cavities for maximum cavity protection. And now available in a 12 gram sachet for fresh breath. Only 15 shillings. This is Weekend Edition with Smriti Vidyarthi. Welcome back and to some politics now. ODM leader Raila Odinga now says the BBI rallies will resume once the threat of the coronavirus has been dealt with. Odinga says the BBI agenda is only on a half-time break as it's yet to accomplish what he and President Uhuru Kenyatta set out to do. NTB senior political reporter Kennedy Morethi with more. The reggae tunes that were characteristic of the BBI rallies may just make a comeback after the coronavirus threat dies down. The lead player in the rallies, ODM leader Raila Odinga, who was among guests at the burial of Tekra Muigai, daughter of Keroche proprietors Joseph and Tabitha Karanja, said the rallies would resume as soon as the virus threat had been eliminated, as the rallies had not yet achieved the intended goals. This is the time for us to rise and to come together as a people and work together. And this is resonates very well with the message that we have been conveying since we did the handshake with my brother, President Uhuru Kenyatta. That we want to bring the people of Kenya together, build the bridges to bring the people of Kenya together. And we are sure that this will succeed. After the, after the corona crisis will emerge again. Reggae is in half time. Vada ya korege, vada ya corona, reggae itaendelea kunguruma. Nobody can stop reggae. Raila also hinted that the president may set up a team bringing together experts from the different sectors of the economy to explore ways to revive the economy with the ODM leader possibly at the helm. And we need to come up with a post-corona strategy of survival. How we are going to revive our country because this is a crisis, but as they say it, uh, all the times that every crisis offers an opportunity. Leaders who attended the burial also called on the government to ease the tax burden on Keroche breweries, which has been in a tax dispute with the Kenya Revenue Authority. Yes, businesses must pay taxes. Because without taxes, government cannot run its operations. But taxes should not be used to destroy businesses. The, if you destroy the goose that lays the golden egg, where are you going to get another one? If indeed Keroche was a British company or a French company and they were going through what they were going, the ambassador to that country would have already seen the Minister for Trade and would never have been in this problem. There is no way a multinational can go through the problems that local companies go. So even as we talk of expanding our local industrial footprint, this will never happen if we continue treating our local investors like criminals or people who are here second guessing. Kennedy Muredi and TV. 
Now, the net earnings of alcoholic beverages manufacturer East African Breweries will not exceed 8.6 billion shillings for the full year ended at June 2020. At the very least, investors are now expecting a 25% decline from the earnings registered in the same period in 2019. This is according to a statement from the company's board, which has issued a profit warning. The board has attributed the profit warning to the adverse effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as the raft of measures taken to contain the disease, which have negatively impacted its business operations. The EABL share at the Nairobi Securities Exchange has lost 16.9% of its value since the year started, closing Friday's trade at 165 shillings. Cautionary statement in terms of the EABL <coughs> trading. It is just that, it's a cautionary statement. As you're aware, things are moving very fast, they're changing very fast, so who knows what will happen. Of course, as you're aware that this pandemic has hit consumption of our brands, as our brands are of social nature. So if things relax, things could get better, but I don't think anybody knows what's going to happen next week, let alone next month. All right, time for another quick break. But first, have a look at these. Now, leopards are, of course, incredibly rare animals to see. But in the tree-covered hills of Islamabad in Pakistan, the leopards, jackals and other creatures have been enjoying a rare respite from the throngs of hikers and joggers that normally pack the trails and have been captured on camera traps as the crowds ease. Your gums hurt? Yeah. Does your toothpaste contain sage, eucalyptus, myrrh, chamomile? All that in one toothpaste? Yes, try Colgate Herbal. Colgate Herbal contains nature's best herbs and Colgate's fluoride technology to give you strong teeth and healthy gums. Ah, Colgate Herbal. Let's go. Colgate Herbal for strong teeth and healthy gums naturally. Credit to you if you stay at home. If you must shop online, use your NCBA credit card. Stay home. Stay safe. For a better tomorrow, don't forget to do the 1, 2, 3 with Colgate every night. Welcome back. Vulnerable communities in Ilaret along the Kenya-Ethiopia border have been hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic. And to compound their problems of biting food shortages looming following the closure of the Kenya-Ethiopia border and the state of emergency in force in Ethiopia, almost 90% of communities in Ilaret in Marsabit County heavily rely on Ethiopia for food supplies. Mamo Ali has more. Across major towns in Marsabit County, politicians are busy distributing COVID-19 prevention materials such as sanitizers and masks. Yet for Ilere Town, not a single hand washing booth has been set up in any of public places. And for this far-flung town, which is located on the shores of Lake Trukana, the government's directive on social distancing is not a there too at all. Residents here do not wear masks, and for them, life continues as usual. Residents here say the government has forgotten them during this COVID-19 crisis with the long stretch forming the Kenya-Ethiopia border not having any screening point. I have not seen a single place or a public place where there are sanitizers. No, uh, I don't think the people here can afford masks. And if they even could afford the masks, where are the masks? There are no masks. And I think this is also 
where the government is also failing because you should not only just concentrate on on the big cities you know not you know county headquarters or what have you i think these small villages like here Ilerat, for example avail the masks even if they are for sale people afford them i don't think they are too destitute not to afford even a 20 shilling mask enforcing the curfew in Ilerat is an appeal task for police officers since some of the places cannot be accessed due to its remoteness and hostile reception that officers on the ground receive when enforcing both social distancing and curfews. So basically, the, 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 the local authorities, they're imposing the curfew. That I'm not denying. But then they also have their challenges. You know, the challenges, you know, they cannot reach all these places because it's just within these two, two centers where they can reach. But if you go to the forest, for example, nobody goes to the forest because, you know, you go even places where there are no roads. You cannot even reach by, by vehicle. Residents are least concerned about wearing masks and sanitizing, since their greatest concern at the moment is combating the biting starvation. Almost 90% of communities in Illyrate heavily rely on Ethiopia for food supply, and now the closure of the Kenya-Ethiopia border spells doom for the community that has been marginalized by both levels of government in Kenya. Baka sahi, hakuna chakula imesha fika hapa. Na injaa hiko kwa hali ya juu sana. Kwa sababu, penye the nearest market wanga tunenda ni huko Ethiopia. Na hiyo poda, ili inaitua total lockdown. Imefanyo na Ethiopia. Asa hakuna kuenda huko, asa hapa injaa hiko hali ya juu sana. Watu wako na injaa sana. And, as the 10 days door-to-door county-wide awareness campaign to reduce rural infections come to an end, more needs to be done to educate the community in the north who, despite local initiative by NGOs, failed to adhere to the need for social distancing. Lakini, because of ignorance of the most pastoralist communities, wanasema, ah, hiyo ni enu, hiyo ni enu ya watu anguo. Inaitaji watu wawo ikuwa ground kabisa, alafu watu wakua 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 distributed, baka waende kwa mali huko, waelemishu ya visuri. Waelemishu ya vizuri, maridio, maridio, ndi watafamu kabisa. Lakini ya siku moja kupita na kurudi, hiyo awata shika vizuri. Mamu Ali, NTV, Marsabit. Now with movement restricted across much of the world, many are having to find ways to get their lives going. And for postdoctoral researcher um, Dumas Galvez from Panama City, the restrictions mean that he cannot visit the lab or carry out field research. So get this, he transported his research, including his tiny subjects, there they are, into his bathroom in his house. All right, uh, let's now take a quick break. Uh, on the Sports News, we'll tell you more about the Ghost Games as German football returns. Fresh mboga, vegetables, foodstuffs, meat products, bakery products, detergents, all clothing and footwear, books, board games, gym accessories, households, and cookery online. Kindly visit taskies.dpo.store to place an order and get delivered to your doorstep. Wahenga walisema, hakuna kazi ngumu na hakuna kazi raisi. <laughs> Watu kwa ground waka uliza, umejaribu njengo. Take a moment and think about that. Kazia Mjengo, the fundi, arguably the literal definition of a hard worker. Imagine building all these houses to perfection. What does it take to be a good fundi? Do they dream of having such houses? How selfless. Show me the best house in the country, then show me the person whose hands built it. Show me a better definition of unsung heroes. Every Friday at 7.30 p.m. on Wicked Edition.
Here at NMG, we are working very hard to ensure your favorite publications, Daily Nation, Business Daily, Taifa Leo and the East African are readily available. In a bid to support the efforts to prevent the transmission of COVID-19, NMG has ensured our staff, our distributors and their staff adhere to set guidelines. At our printing plant, all staff are required to wash their hands before entering the factory and must be wearing a mask. All workers either change their clothes on entering the factory or wear an overcoat. We are keeping doors open to avoid our staff touching door handles repeatedly. With our automated printing, contact with the newspaper is kept to a minimum and at the parking process, the staff observes social distancing. Vehicles used to transport the newspapers are disinfected daily before the newspapers are loaded. And our delivery staff all wear masks and wash their hands regularly. Our vendors ensure that they sanitize every time they handle money and wear their masks at all times. NMG is proud to be able to safely meet your information needs. Stay safe, stay informed with our favorite NMG publications. Let's have a look at the day's sports news. Welcome, my name is Brian Otwal. As Kenyan athletes continue to take a break from intense training and race competitions in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic, 2019 Chicago and Boston Marathon champion Lawrence Cherono has urged Kenyan athletes to put the, the free time to good use for personal benefits and for the countries as well. Lois Wangoi met up with him and shares this report. Saturday afternoon and Chicago and Boston Marathon champion Lawrence Cherono in the company of his wife Winnie Kibiene visited with Neema Children's Home in Eldoret. This marathon champion arrived with food and non-food items for these 52 children who live with terminal illnesses. So wakati ya sasa tukaona wacha tutumie wakati kwa sababu ile muda ingine hii ukoje exam ikiisha kesho mimi nirudi kambi sitapata nafasi ya kukuja Lawrence Cherono says the worldwide break from athletics as a measure to contain the coronavirus has presented a perfect opportunity for the ever busy athletes to touch base with other activities such as supporting the vulnerable in society ikiwa ni kutakuwa na mbio of which na amini ya kwamba itakuwa Boston na uh, hiyo mwezi wa tisa. So mimi mwenyewe uh, nafanya mazoezi yangu kama kawaida uh, nyumbani. If all factors had remained constant, this top marathoner would have been busy preparing to defend his titles at the Boston and Chicago major marathons. Last year, he won the Boston Marathon in April at 2.07.57. He would go on to improve on third time and win Chicago Marathon in October 2019 at 2.05.45. Lawrence Cherono is expected to grace the Olympics, which have been pushed till next year. Personally, I am going to say that this corona is immediately going to answer my question. Na nitaendelea vizuri of which tutakutana na wenzangu na tutaenda tutarudi kambi. Lawrence Cherono is currently tied with two Ethiopians as the 17th fastest marathoner. Lois Wangoi, NTV Sports, Eldoret. And CAF has resolved to accelerate the payment of final tranche of financial re rewards to participating clubs in CAF interclub competitions for the 2019-2020 season. The distribution which has since commenced is to reduce the financial burden on the 32 clubs that reached the group stages of the Total CAF Champions League and Total CAF Confederation Cup during these trying times of COVID-19 pandemic. Clubs will receive their dues based on the established prize money for each competition till the quarter-final stage when the two competitions were suspended indefinitely due to COVID-19. The minimum guaranteed for clubs participating in the CAF Champions League is 55 million shillings and 27.5 million shillings for the CAF Confederation Cup. Usually clubs received their financial entitlements for the inter-club competitions at the end of the season. 
And Erling brought Haaland scored for Borussia Dortmund as they marked the return of the Bundesliga during the coronavirus outbreak with a convincing 4-0 derby win over Schalke at the Signal Iduna Park.